what are these safety protocols the electoral commission says it is going to be putting in place clearly in the face of uh, coronavirus or COVID-19, a lot of things have changed. The new normal is social distancing, regularly washing hands, etc. How does the Electoral Commission intend to implement these protocols during the registration exercise? Thank you very much. Um, let me say that um, in the midst of a pandemic, an election has been conducted. Uh, an election was conducted in South Korea successfully. An election was conducted in Burundi, even without any, the observance of any form of safety. We all saw it. Now, we are saying that we do care about Ghanaians. We care about the safety of Ghanaians, and therefore we are putting in measures to make sure that we do not endanger the lives of the ordinary Ghanaian, particularly the applicants who turn up at the uh, registration centers to register during the period. So we've put in safety measures. First and foremost, when you, before you uh, get to the, the registration center, you must wear a face mask and you must read properly. And that is compulsory. That is compulsory. And secondly, you, you, your temperature will be checked with a, um, with a temperature gun. And if it's within the range, fine, you can proceed and then wash your hands we provide um, these Veronica buckets with soap and uh, water. So uh, you have to wash your hands thoroughly before you move to the next step. And we are going to make sure that we social distance, you know, so you don't get close to each other. Um, apart from the applicants, we have uh, officials who are going to man the uh, registration centers. So we're going to make sure that they also social distance, say that they do not get close to each other at least one meter apart, you know, to, to ensure that we are all safe. Now, we're going to use machines, scanners. After each use, we're going to clean the machines. But somebody was saying that, oh, at this point in time, you have, um, your temperature has been checked, your, your um, what do you call it? You have washed, washed your hands. So what else do you need? But we, we want to ensure that we are adhering to the safety protocols thoroughly. You know, strict adherence to the safety protocols. And therefore, we are not leaving any soul on tank in this direction. Now, I haven't finished. And even there again, right. before you leave the um, registration yeah. center, your hands will be sanitized. What more can we ask for? Uh, we, we really do care about the safety of the country. Well, we know um, the pandemic is staring us, you know, in our faces. And if, for instance, I'm in a queue, my temperature is taken and I'm above the expected, say I'm um, 30, 39, what happened? Um, there will be mobile um, vans. So they will be called in to ascertain you know, the need, why your temperature um, is high. So they would have to, you know, but there again, it is important to emphasize that the fact that your temperature is high doesn't, doesn't mean you disenfranchised. No. We are, go we are not going to disenfranchise any Ghanaian who is qualified to register as a voter. Alternative arrangements will be made. And the registration is going to run for a while, you know, altogether about 38 days. So, as an applicant, if you are so qualified, you'll be given the opportunity to register. If, if we are to look at all these protocols being put in place and uh, compare that to previous registration exercises, what estimated numbers are we looking at? We are looking at about 15 to 16 million applicants okay. nationwide. Okay. And are we sure that we'll be able to meet them looking at the big previously? There were no issues, so people were safe, they were in line, they just go through the process, and we had them in numbers turning up. This time around, if you're going to be doing it in bits and pieces, observing these protocols, there's a possibility we might have a low turnout. That is a perception. It may be wrong. What we, we are saying is that vo voting is a right. right. The right to vote is there, but it goes with responsibility. Therefore, as an applicant, as Ghanaians, once you are qualified, 
you are 18 years and above, you are a Ghanaian citizen, you, you have the right to register. It goes with responsibility. So you, you, it is important. Our civic rights, you know, are there. we need to assess them. So you need to take a step further and go. After we go to the marketplaces, we shouldn't be scared because we are putting in measures to make sure that we are all safe. We will all be registering. We will all be voting. We are not going to endanger the lives of Ghanaians. So what we are saying is that you come to the center if you are so qualified to register. Okay. And I believe it is all in partnership with your other major stakeholders. They've all agreed to these protocols being implemented. You, know? you see, we have a responsibility as an election management body to ensure that we are all safe. And that is the reason we are taking these measures. And at yesterday's IPAC, we communicated this information to them. And um, let me say that they were glad to hear the kind of safety measures we are putting in place. Because we are not just using the hand, the hand sanitizer, said that we are, we are not even sure whether somebody, but we are going to make sure that we follow it every step of the way. There are concerns about um public education and clearly outlining all of these we do need our citizens to know have you already started some kind of public education and what has the reception been like we are doing public education precisely and we are going to intensify uh, public education uh, through the media through various channels of communication to make sure that we we meet we are able to reach our target you know, audiences. You, you mentioned the issue of uh, an IPAC meeting yesterday. It dominated media discussions. One of the key issues was that two key parties decided not to turn up or did not turn up. And they given the NDC, for instance, has given a reason, which is that the letters you gave, you sent to them were wrong. Or had, you said the first one had the wrong date, and the second one had the wrong time. You said 10 p.m. on the letter instead of 10 p.m. How is the EC feeling about taking this issue of non, their, your inability to accommodate it right? Um, are you saying that I, I, I am yet to see the, the actual letters? No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm saying that I'm yet to see what you are talking about because the, the political parties were given, they were all given letters. And prior to the meeting, we all heard of the fact that the EC was going to have um, an IPAC meeting, one in the morning, and then one, and then I, we had um, some reasons being assigned to some of the political parties that they were not going to attend. And I, I didn't hear this one. That's why I'm saying that I don't want, even want to go there. But what I do know is that um, the crux of the matter is that there was an IPAC meeting yesterday, and all the political parties were invited. 17 of them were around for the meeting. And the letters, you want to say anything? I, I need to verify a few things because I, before I can comment on, uh -huh. on it. But uh, the crux of the matter is that prior to the IPAC meeting, all the political parties knew that there was going to be IPAC because we had heard certain comments from some political parties assigning reasons why they thought they were not going to come. And it, that wasn't part of, you know, the reasons they were giving. You have mentioned two key identification uh, documentations that people could use to register. First, you say a, a Ghanaian passport, or uh, they should have the NIA card. Or, in the absence of both, then they should have two Ghanaians to guarantee for them. What, what informed the need for these two cards and all the two persons guaranteeing for you? Let me say that we've come a long way. Time was when we used to have just a register in front of us on election day. And as a voter, you went to the center and your name was ticked. And you proceeded to the booth to, to you know, as it were, cast your ballot or vote. Now we migrate, we moved from there to thumbprint ID cards, and then away from that, we photo ID card, and then to the biometric. Now, why did we, you know, 
move away from the old system because um, with each policy from time to time you try to review you know when you have an election or an exercise you do a SWOT analysis you look at the strengths weaknesses and so on and so forth so if you realize at the point in time that a particular document does not serve the purpose for which it was intended for as an institution you have every right to make changes yeah. or we make we review this remember that the supreme court ordered the electoral commission to expunge or delete the names of those who had used the NHIS card. Right. And the reason the commission sent this to parliament for an amendment was that the, the electoral commission could not do it satisfactorily because of the time limits. So they say, the commission is saying that because of that, there are people who are not qualified, yet they have their names. And somebody just sent me um, somebody's ID card, you know, a Chinese. We are still investigating how whether it's authentic and you know, so if a chinese um by all standards is assumed that he is not a Ghanaian, appears with the id card at the station he may be challenged we are saying that we want a more credible system such that we believe that the Ghanaian passport is biometric the Ghana card, you have to go through a rigorous system to have the Ghana card. So I'm saying, we're saying that if you have the Ghana card or you have the Ghanaian passport, it means that you are the one you are purporting to be. Okay. Therefore, it's a good index for uh, identification purposes and we, we do not have any doubt at all. Now, even, even then, you can still be challenged that you are not the one you are purporting to be. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we are saying that in view of the fact that we do not all, all have these documents, get two guarantors to, to guarantee that you are you so and so. And once you are guaranteed for, let me, let me land. If you guarantee for me, for instance, I, let's say I don't have an ID, um, the Ghana card, I don't have the password, and you guarantee for me, and I get the card. I'm able to say it when I get the voter's ID card. I can guarantee for all your team members. So long as I do not exceed the 10. So technically, there has been, rather been an expansion of the system. Do you get the point? Yes. But what then does that, how about a birth certificate? We are not using the birth certificate. The reason the commission, the reason the commission assigned to it is that it doesn't have any picture on it. There's no photograph on it. And you know, doing, we are the election management body, and we know the kind of things people do to go through the system. These days, what can you tell us about them? We know they would have to go through some training. Has has that training started? We will zoom into action very soon. And I can assure you that um, we're going to strategize such a way that in such a way that it will be very effective and efficient. So we don't have any qualms about that. And, and through all that training period, you're looking at uh, observing these social distancing. Of course. Of, of course. And what numbers are you looking at nationwide? How many people are you looking at training? When is it going into? We, 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 we're going to have like about six officials for each. But I, I don't have a figure with me at the moment, but what I do know is that we have about 33,676 um, polling stations throughout the country. And therefore, we're going to have, but because we are going to move, we are going to use a cluster system, and we're going to move. Otherwise, I would, I would have asked you to multiply. Yeah. But because we are going to use teams, so five. Um, polling stations will constitute one cluster and then they they will move the team will move to each polling station for six days stay there work get ready reorganize and move to the next day. so they will, will move in class we have been clustered and they will move you know from place to place as and when you know it's possible and announcements will be made um, effective communication tools will be employed to make sure that if you are coming to my area where 
I, I would want to register in my area where I live, where I, I'm qualified to register. Definitely, you sh you sh I should know the time will be coming to register. Are we starting from some regions, or we are starting across the country at the exact same time? At the exact same time. the regions, we'll be going Clustered, to yes. Clusters. Yes, precisely, simultaneously. Um, the other concern has also been the issues of the NIA card. What's the collaboration like between the Electoral Commission and the NIA? They are also now trying to mop up and go to some of the regions they couldn't um, register before the lockdown and this uh, corona pandemic issue became um, an issue. I, I know there's some level of collaboration, but I, I don't speak for the NIA, so I wouldn't want to veer into their arena. I speak for the Electoral Commission of Ghana, and I know that there's some level of that. What I do know, the last time I overheard their boss talking about the fact that they, they have more cards ready, so they will find ways of giving the cards to their owners. Okay. So I want to believe that we'll have more cards in the system than we do now. We, okay. we do also know that on during the registration process, there's facial, record, facial identification. Mm -hmm. In this era of having to wear masks, how does that play out in the scheme of things? Oh, of course. When you get there, you social distance and you take your picture and then put on your mask. Normal. So you can just bring down the mask? Briefly. Would that not compromise your systems in any way? No, you? no. Because of the social distance. Yes. And before we do that, I believe there will be a pilot phase for to see how your machines are going to work, especially in these times, have all of that been considered? Of course, we're going to have um, piloting in all the regions, the 16 regions. We're going to have one here at the headquarters to make sure that we test the system well to, as it were, mitigate any anomaly they may, that, may, that we may encounter to make sure that the system works perfectly. And we have these machines already in, in, in town there biometric machines will be using. Have they already been? We, we, that the person is a Ghanaian citizen of 18 years and above and lives in there. You don't have any business guaranteeing for so that guaranteeing for that person. Okay. Talk to us about mop-up. If you're looking at using a period of 38 days to capture um, an estimated number of 16, 17 million Ghanaians, at what point are you sure to end and then what period are you going to be using for mop-up? Now, when we are done with the exercise for the That's period, not days. no, it's within. Okay. Um, when we are done, we have three days for MOPA for people who, for one reason or the other, couldn't make it during the period, who may have encountered some kind of challenges. That is a period for them to go to the centers to register. If they are qualified. And after that, our persons who were unable to use their 38 day window to register, do they still have the opportunity to at least um, register or get their names or their data captured? Before? Remember that if we give a, a time frame, unless the law allows that, if the time elapses, fine, then we, we are done. But if the law gives you the opportunity to Come up. For example, those who are challenged, you know, if you are registering and you are challenged, mm -hmm. you, 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 we will not give you your voter ID card. We will keep your card until um, you have been cleared by the district registration review committee that you can be added on. So at that point, the register is fluid. Now, at a point, you cannot add you cannot subtract. And remember that there are party agents all, all over. There are party agents who you see them with exercise books, you know, making sure that if 100 people register in the day, it doesn't go beyond that. I can tell you that they know all those, they may, they may know all those who register. So the system is said that it is, it is so transparent. We give them, you know, the opportunity to ask questions if they are curious, you know, to, to pry into whatever we're doing by politely.
if there is a delay, already there are persons who have had raised concerns. First, it was late, it was withdrawn, then it was late. And the minority, for instance, because they are, the NDCS specifically, because they are against the new register, have raised several concerns. Are we looking at building a consensus with any institution that has an issue with the new register before we go into it? Civil society organizations, some, have also raised concerns about we going into it. Remember that there, there are divergent views. There will always be divergent views. More especially when we are, we are, we are dealing with political parties. We have over 25 political parties in the country. It is rare to see all political parties agreeing, you know, to such issues. It, it, it's, it's, if you have to go down memory lane, these things do have, have been happening, you know, to the Electoral Commission, one political party, you know, locking horns with the EC on, I mean, jaw joining at times going to court. So, so for us, it's normal. But the crux of the matter is that we look at the ideal situation. We look at what is best for the country and we pursue it boldly. Conclusion, um, in conclusion, can you walk us again through these safety protocols? When I am going to the registration center from home, what are my responsibilities? And when I get there, what would I have to go through? Or what do I have to do? Now, thank you very much. Before you get to the registration center, get your mask ready. You need to get your mask ready and wear it properly. You must wear your mask properly, making sure that like I have done. And then you wear your mask before you approach the um, registration center so you do not endanger you know, the lives of other persons. Now, your, the thermometer gun will be used to check your temperature. If it's normal, you proceed and you'll be given uh, soap to wash your hands under running water. And then you make sure that you social distance, you don't get close to each other. And then after using the scanner, it will be wiped with an alcohol, you know, wipe. And then, then you, your hands will be sanitized before you, you leave. So we have overlapping measures of making sure that we are all safe, you know, at the registration centers. All right, so this has been Hot Issues on TV3. Today, we had the Acting Director of uh, Public Affairs for the Electoral Commission, Mrs. Sylvia Anno. Um, she has walked us through these protocols, and we hope that you do observe them when you go to these registration centers. And hopefully, uh, by December 7, we'll all be ready to go and cast our ballots. Thank you very much for watching. I am Martin Esiridate. Do have a good evening.